Hey folks, my name is Declan Trainer from Performance Trainer. We offer corporate workshops on health, well-being and personal productivity. I'm delighted to be speaking to you here at the IBEC Keep Well Summit on the extraordinary power of mini habits. Employee and corporate well-being is one and the same and it is a win-win situation. When you have employees who feel appreciated at work, they are more likely to put their heart and soul into their work in return. This can only improve company productivity and this is why it is always a worthy investment. When we think of company culture or team cultures, the ones that generally win out are the ones that have set the scene for great and productive work. The benefits to the employer are clear as employees will take less sick days, there'll be better morale amongst employees, there will be more of a sense of togetherness and shared learnings. So it really is, in every sense of the word, win-win. With that in mind, I'm going to present to you some positive mini habits which you can implement from an employer perspective and employee perspective. When these are meshed together, they can really set a great scene in your company culture for health wellness and personal productivity. The areas that we'll be zoning in on are a rise and shine morning routine to make sure employees are arriving to do their best work with pep in their step. We're going to be looking at fueling to perform, so the kind of food that's made available at work and how workplaces can encourage employees to make better decisions. We're going to be zoning in on movement and how sedentaryism has become the new smoking and a couple of ways to counteract this. And lastly, what we'll be focusing in on is stress management. So looking at how email can become a massive disruptor, if not managed in an optimal way. And we'll also be looking at how athletes really take their recovery every bit as seriously as their performance, and why in the workplace that employees need to do the same. They are mental athletes whose tasks require a lot of mental firepower, and thus they need to take their rest, recovery and rejuvenation every bit as seriously as their work in order to stay committed over time, to stay resilient and not suffer from burnout. Now let's begin with the mini habit of movement and physical activity at work. There's been a common misconception around for too long that great work and physical activity are mutually exclusive, that they can't exist together. With employees saying that it's not in our culture, we don't have the space, I don't want to get sweaty in my work outfit, etc. The excuses can be numerous. Whereas certain cultures are now starting to embrace and encourage physical activity and seeing the return. Office workers are sitting on average 9.3 hours per day. Sedentaryism is the new smoking. It is defined as less than 5,000 steps per day. Brisk walking of 75 minutes per week could add almost two years to your life. This is taken from Dr. Moyna, Head of Human Performance and Health at DCU. Hopefully these stats will help you to see the benefit of encouraging your employees to be more healthy and active at work. And if you're an employee who feels like you're towards that sedentary lifestyle, hopefully it has encouraged you to start making some small efforts to up your physical activity. When a workplace encourages employees to engage in physical activity, the employees benefit from a healthier body, more energy and greater feelings of appreciation towards a health conscious employer. Employers benefit from less sick days and a more focused workforce. It opens an opportunity for greater employee cohesion as they get to know colleagues outside the ordinary office environment. Now, for all you employees watching, a couple of really simple mini habits that can help you to up your physical activity. Number one, take the stairs instead of the elevator. This might seem trivial, but believe me, when you accumulate this effort over time and you turn it into a habit, it can have big impact. Number two, you could consider getting out of the metro or the bus in the morning a couple of stops early and walking the rest of the way to work. Equally, you could walk there after work and get the steps up that way. 
Another option if you take the car into work could be to park further away from the office door than you normally would. And finally, consider setting up or joining a running club at work, which will also have the added benefit of offering you a great opportunity to get to know your colleagues outside of the workplace. Now, for you employers watching, a couple of ways that you can use to encourage employees to up their physical activity are as follows. Number one, as part of your employee benefits package, you could offer a step counter. Number two, you could encourage a culture of walking meetings. So what this does is it offers an alternative to the usual trip to the canteen for a coffee or a meeting in the conference rooms. There's also some good research that says when we're walking, we're stimulated and we're more likely to come up with good creative solutions. Number three, you could invest in a lunchtime class for your employees. So let's take the more sedentary employee who might be interested in something like a couch to 10K challenge. So you might be able to get a coach to come online with the times being as they are with COVID to coach them into being able to take on a 10 kilometer in a safe manner and having a good exercise plan in place. Or for the more advanced employee who is already pursuing sport outside of work, for example, a half marathon or a marathon, what they might appreciate is the option to order from the canteen some fruit and yogurt to their desk for when they get back. Why I say this is it's important to realize that your employees will be at different levels when it comes to physical activity and showing an appreciation for each of them, depending on where they're at in their journey, could go a whole way to winning their appreciation and boosting their morale. Lastly, number four, you could set up a weekly, fortnightly, or monthly comms email about health and wellness for your employees. And for an example, you could include something called the habit loop. Use this, the three R's. Number one being reminder. Encourage your employees to set a reminder on their phones at, for example, 10.55. The reminder then is to trigger them to do a routine. So a routine, for example, could be a two to three minute office stretch and then remind them of the reward of this routine, which is more energy and less feelings of stiffness. Mini habits for morning energy. Now we're gonna discuss how your employees can help themselves to have a better start to the day and ensure that they're arriving at work high energy and not feeling like they've already got a day's work complete. We're also going to show how employers can use this win the morning culture to really develop something deeper within what they're doing and how they really engage their employees to have a productive day at work. Now for a couple of reasons why this focus on a good morning routine is important. There's some great research out there that says when you carry out this activity in the morning, instead of another common morning routine activity, you will be 88% more likely to report having had a great day eight hours later. I'll be referring to this one later on. Number two, the Dalai Lama has a fascinating outlook on happiness. He says that happiness is achieved through the elimination of suffering and stress from our lives. What that means is challenging an often held Western belief that happiness is found through addition. So what employees need to do is actively look at their mornings and think, what can we cut out to make it a more stress-free experience? Hopefully this has given you an idea of where these mini habits are going. They're going in the direction of helping you to cut out unhelpful things from that morning routine and then actually realize what the meaningful few activities are from an employee perspective and a company perspective to get them into those early hours. When a workplace encourages employees to engage in a rise and shine morning routine, they do the following. Employees benefit from less stress and greater levels of positivity when they improve their rise and shine morning routine. Employers benefit from greater employee efficiency, clarity and togetherness if they develop their own company morning culture. I'll be referring to some great tips that I've picked up from working with and visiting different companies recently. 
Now for some mini habits for employees when it comes to making that rise and shine morning routine easier. Number one, always put your keys in the same spot. We'll have often have had that sensation in the morning where you already feel like you're under pressure with the amount of work you want to get done that day and then you realise you can't find your keys and panicked you go around the house for 20 to 30 minutes until you locate them. This will cut out all the stress of that. So if you haven't done it already, find that spot, make it the new spot and turn it into a habit. Number two, adapt the Angela Merkel, Barack Obama and Mark Zuckerberg approach. What they did was they limited their outfit options. If you look at photos of them, they're often wearing the same outfits. So by doing this, what they did was they limited the amount of decisions they needed to make in the morning. And we can do the same. By picking out in advance what we're gonna wear the following day, again, it eliminates a decision from an already busy morning routine. Number three, I wanna go back to that reference that I made to the study about how to ensure you have a great day. It was done by a positive psychologist called Michelle Geelan. What they did was they split participants into two groups. One group watched an ordinary news item for three minutes and the other group watched an empowering and inspiring news item for three minutes. What they did was they then checked back in with both groups eight hours later to see how their day had gone. And unsurprisingly, the group that saw the more positive and empowering clip were 88% more likely to report having had a great day. Now it is unsurprising that they reported having a better day, but just that figure, 88%, they were almost twice as likely. And that's because ordinary news items are often alarming. If they were all positive, we wouldn't check them as much. And that's why it's in their interest. Now, with COVID in these recent months, it may have been even more negative than normal. So do be aware of how you're managing this in your morning and trying to keep your positivity levels up for when you reach the office, whether that be at home or at work. Now I'd like to talk to you about the meaningful few items that you should consider including in your morning routine. They are mindset, movement, and meditation. We've already seen the importance of a positive mindset through the Michelle Geelan study. So ask yourself, is there a positive podcast that I could listen to on my way to work? or even just a couple of songs that put me in a good mood. On the movement side, there are some good YouTube links that I will provide that can help you start your morning with some nice movement, light, and getting your body moving and awake. Meditation. This can be as simple as incorporating a small little mini habit of breathing deeply for as little as two minutes. A handy way to do this could be to take a nice in breath, filling your stomach and chest and counting to four, pausing for two seconds and exhaling to the count of six. You do this for 12 breaths, et voila, that's your two minutes. And you should feel a nice stress reduction. Lastly, I want to talk to you about the timing of that morning coffee. A lot of people reach for it first thing in the morning. I'm going to advise you why you should revise this and adapt it. A glass of water can be a much better start to the day. It's also energy giving and when we wake is the longest period that we've gone without water in our day. Better to leave that coffee for a couple of hours after rising when our natural cortisol production starts to wane. Now to mention a few tips for employers how to set a rise and shine morning routine culture in your company. Well, number one, I had the pleasure of visiting Seating Matters, who make chairs for the elderly. They have a factory in Limavady, County Derry, and they have what is called a lean culture. That means eliminating waste and looking to build a really strong company culture. And it actually begins with their morning meeting. This kicks off at half eight, where all employees in the factory come together. They discuss the best improvement of the day from yesterday. They talk about improvement opportunities for today and they also do a morning stretch. The beauty of the morning stretch is it's led by somebody different every day. Even shy people get up and they'll do it. And this is brilliant because what it has shown is that Seating Matters actually takes their employees seriously in terms of personal development and not just their role specific development. Once that's complete, 
Each worker goes back to their own personal space within the factory and they then tidy that up and make any improvements that need to be made in that first half an hour of their working day. So basically they're making sure the workspace is clean, tidy and ready to go for an efficient day of work. Now to mention another company culture that I found quite interesting and pretty good. So unlike the last company, they're working in a different industry. So it's the beverages industry. And what they did was they had a culture of not organizing any meetings before 9.30 a.m. This enabled employees to come in and make their own start to the day and plan what they wanted to get done before they felt under pressure to attend a meeting. Number two, it's important to adapt your morning routine within your company to the environment that it's in, to your employees, and also to the industry that it's in. So having discussed with an employee working in the beverages industry, a rule that they had within his company was that they didn't have meetings with colleagues before 9.30. And this was a very welcome one because what it did was enable him and colleagues to go off and put a plan in place for their day before feeling under pressure to attend a meeting. Lastly, number three, you can encourage your employees to run a priority check against the task that they plan to do that day. What this is, is having a very simple question in place to help them analyze the task they plan to do that day and give priority to the most important ones. So they could ask themselves, rate one to 10, how important getting this task complete is to my team hitting its Q1 objectives. That's an example. This question might be different for everyone. A new intake may also ask themselves, how important is getting this task done on a scale of one to 10 in terms of my promotion prospects or in terms of building rapport with my direct manager? So that's just a little idea for you to think about as an employer and are you setting a culture for your employees to start the day on the right foot? Now I'd like to discuss some mini habits for employees and employers when it comes to stress management, and more specifically, email. Workers are spending on average of six hours per day on email. It has been shown if they reduce this time, they can actually become more efficient and benefit from a stress reduction similar to practicing relaxation techniques. Number two, email is also attractive because it can make us feel busy and like a lot is happening. This is a productivity issue if it gets in the way of prioritizing our most value add work. Number three, email can contribute to that always on work mode feeling that can lead to employee burnout. Hopefully those stats will resonate with you in seeing just how much time that we can spend in email and actually make us reflect on how much of it is actually necessary and how much is it driven by curiosity and to see what's the next new thing that has arrived in. So I'm gonna be going through some useful tips for you and your employees on how to really zone in on this area and make some gradual, small improvements for the better. When a workplace encourages employees to engage in healthy email management policies, the employee will benefit from less stress and greater feelings of control and self-efficacy. The employers will benefit from greater employee efficiency improved morale and higher energy as employees will not treat email like a chat function and they'll feel like work-life balance is appreciated. Now, some mini habits for you employees. I'm gonna discuss a very interesting study on email out of the University of British Columbia. They split participants into two groups. One group was limited to checking email three times a day and the other group had to work with email open throughout the day. What they found was that the group who checked their email just three times a day ended up being 20% faster at dealing with email and also benefiting from a stress reduction similar to if they were practicing relaxation techniques. So ask yourself, are you sometimes going into your email just because of a sense of curiosity? And that's gonna to link to my next point, point number two. Have a very definite plan of action when you enter your inbox. So go into it with a mindset of action, not curiosity. There's generally five simple actions you can take with an email, which will help you reach inbox zero and the clarity of mind that can come from that. 
Usually if the email takes less than two minutes to reply to, I would encourage you to reply there and then. If it's one that needs more reflection, I would say put it in an action folder. If it's one where you're waiting on more information, I'd put it in a waiting for folder. If it's one that is actually for somebody else, you forward it on. And if it's not relevant, you delete it. This is a very simple approach to managing your email in an efficient manner and keeping that inbox at zero. Now I'd like to give you a couple of points around managing email in that later part of the day. So number three, I would advise having a reminder on your phone 30 minutes before you plan to leave work. So for example, if you plan to leave work at 6 p.m., set a wrap-up reminder at 5.30. What that does is it encourages us to finish up the task that we're on and not send out those two or three emails that we sometimes are inclined to do and end up leaving the office late. More often than not, those emails could wait until the following morning. The other point and the last point that we need to be really careful of, seeing as burnout has become such an issue in the modern workplace, is emails in the evening. When the BlackBerry initially came out, people were obsessed. They thought it was brilliant. They thought it was revolutionary. What they didn't realize is it created a culture of feeling like we always had to be switched on and in work mode. And if we're not careful to manage this in the evening, it can lead to trouble. So some advice, when you get home, put your phone in do not disturb or airplane mode. Some people have even bought what are called phone cells where they lock their phone away for the evening just so they can give some time to the rejuvenation to their loved ones and to actually coming back to work the following day feeling like they've had a bit of a rest and a bit of a break from it. Another thing you can do if you have to be on email in the evenings is look to switch the responsibilities with a colleague within your team. So you could do one evening on and one evening off and only alert each other if something needs immediate action. So there are a couple of hacks which I hope you'll find helpful to really improve your email routine. Bruce Daisley, who is speaking at this Keep Well Summit, mentioned the pressure that comes from constant connectedness. And so it's really important for employers to have best email practices in place for their employees to follow. Because this drive for constant connectedness could cause a culture of people being on email all hours of the day. Number two is to consider encouraging employees to use an email sign off. I received an email recently that I thought was very good and the sender said, I am sending this email at a time that is convenient to me. If you are seeing it outside of your common working hours, I do not expect you to read or respond to it. This could be a good one to encourage for your employees. Now I'd like to finish on some good little mini habit recommendations for fuel and sleep. So the kind of nutrition that we're intaking, also how we're resting and recovering between bouts of effort when it comes to work. Now for a couple of studies to highlight the importance of nutrition and rest. Number one comes from a joint study between Google and Yale. And what they found was that by moving snacks only 11 feet, that people actually consumed 50% more snacks when they were proximal versus a further 11 foot away. This shows that the proximity to snacks and unhealthier foods is an important thing to bear in mind for your employees. Number two, this is a study on sleep. In the University of Pennsylvania, they took three groups. They put one group on an eight hour sleep regimen, a six hour sleep regimen, and a four hour sleep regimen, each for 14 days. What they found was that the six and four hour group, their performance declined each day. But worryingly, after a few days, they stopped noticing the decline in performance. So chronically deprived employees, when it comes to sleep, their performance is being affected. And this is why this area should be considered as important. Lastly, I'd like to mention a study based on the sunlight exposure of employees and the impact that this can have on their sleep. And what it found was employees who got access to windows and sunlight during the day at the office benefited from 46 minutes 
more on average sleep per night. There are ways that employees can actually help themselves to get a better night's sleep and it starts a lot earlier in the day than you'd expect and employers can also set the scene for employees taking this area of their life seriously. And when we match this with better efforts on fuel and nutrition, this can really create a nice, nice atmosphere for better performance. When Workplace encourages employees to engage in healthy fuel and rest, the employees benefit from greater energy, better resiliency and more creative insights. Employers benefit from less staff burnout, greater employee retention and greater staff morale. Actions for employees. Ask yourselves, how can I make healthy eating at home and in the office easier? How can I make unhealthy eating at home and in the office more difficult? Number two, ask yourself, are there some simple swaps that I could incorporate? For example, if you go out on a tough run and you usually go for a very sugary drink afterwards, ask yourself, could I prepare something that's healthier? Like a blend of strawberries, banana and frozen raspberries with some water. Or if you're looking to lose weight, it might be a good idea to swap a latte for an Americano and save yourself 200 calories. These are little swaps, but over time they can have a big impact. Number three, you can check menus and make decisions in advance. So what you could consider is what am I going to eat tomorrow? Are we going out for a team meal at work? Could I check the menu out in advance? These little steps can really help you to make better decisions as time goes on. Now to help you get better sleep and activities you can do during the day that will enable that. Number one is get some exercise in. This has the brilliant benefit of being energy giving in the short run and the couple of hours post exercise, but actually making you tired later in the day when you want to be tired as it leads to those hours before sleep. And it doesn't have to be a massive workout. It can be as little as 20 minutes to get a large part of those benefits from exercise. Number two is get some sunlight into your day. So you'll have heard the study referenced earlier about exposure to sunlight. So if you're not sitting by a window in the office, it can be a great idea to go out and get some sunlight on your lunchtime. Lastly, I want to link the two together, nutrition and sleep. So there's a fascinating study done where two groups, one was put in a group with a nutritionist whereby they were recommended high fiber and high protein foods and the other group could eat what they want. And they veered towards more fatty foods and higher sugar foods. The group that was on the high fiber, high protein diet got to sleep in just 17 minutes versus the group that could eat what they want that got to sleep in 29 minutes. So interesting to see the sleep improvement benefit of also eating well. An employee of Alexian Pharmaceuticals was interviewed on a previous IBEC video and he mentioned how they had linked up with their caterers to offer their employees some very healthy options come lunchtime. And not only this, but they also provided the calorie information of the dishes that were on offer. So this is a great example of the efforts that a workplace can go to help to educate their employees and one that would be very much appreciated. Number two is consider adding this point to a weekly, fortnightly or monthly health and wellness communication, talking about the impact of caffeine on sleep. So you could include that once we have a coffee, that it has a half-life of five to six hours. What this means is that half of that caffeine will still be in your system five to six hours later. And this can impact the quality of your sleep. So a good rule of thumb is to encourage your employees to cut out caffeinated drinks after the hours of two. They'll appreciate the advice and they'll be able to give or take it as they wish. And that's a wrap folks. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you've taken some healthy habit recommendations from it, whether you're an employer or an employee. And when all matched together, these can set a really good scene for great company cultures and great employee productivity, morale and contribution. 
If you'd like to find out more, please go to www.performancetrainer.com and that's T-R-E-A-N-O-R where you can find out more information. I'd love to hear from you and all the best with the rest of the summit.